Hey there everyone and welcome back to the Geeks for Geeks channel and it's been a while that we have uploaded a video on competitive programming series so recently I've got an invitation from Google FUBAR challenge so what is FUBAR challenge actually you can just do a little bit of Google search actually it is a Google challenge in which you can only get registered by the invitation you can't just go to the site and sign up for the challenge there has to come an invitation from Google to you okay so I was one of those lucky peoples and I got a Google FUBA challenge invitation so uh, I was in around level 2 so I got this very beautiful problem for you that was that is pretty much similar to the problem that was asked in FUBA challenge level 2 FUBA, uh, level 2 question so I can't use the proper same question from there to here so it's just like a similar question from that okay so the name of the question is Google's powerhouse problem okay and we have to find the maximum power you can get from solar panels so here's how the question goes first of all this question is obviously asked in Google as it was given in the Google foobar challenge okay so you and your team of henchmen have been assigned to repair the solar panels of honest space station but you would rather not take all of this down since they help to power the space station and all of this stuffs okay so the main question start from the second paragraph actually uh, we need to figure out which set of panels in any given array we can take down offline to repair while still maintaining the maximum amount of power output per array okay so what we have to do we have to first need to figure out what the maximum output for each array actually is okay and now some of these panels are malfunctioning and they are draining energy from the system but since we have been selected in google foo by we have got an invitation so we know a trick that uh, how we can use panel wave stabilizer and let combine like two negative output panels to produce positive output of the multiple of their power values now the final product may be very large it is given in the question due to the numbers so uh, we can give the solution in the string representation also now let's move forward to the input output types and our task we, what we have to do first of all uh, the input will contain only an array uh, the elements of the array like 2 minus 3 1 0 5 and all of this this uh, all the numbers are the power output from each panels each solar panels okay and what we have to give the output we have to return the maximum product of this of some non empty subset of the array okay so for example in this what will be the maximum product we can give out we can multiply minus 5 minus 3 that is 15 and 2 so 30 30 will be the output for this array particular array okay so what is our task we have to write a function solution that takes a list of integers representing the power output levels of each panel in an array and return the maximum product of some non-empty subset of this numbers okay now let's talk about the constraints so the number of pan panels will be between 0 and 51 and the output of each panel each solar panel will be between minus 1000 and positive 1000 and also uh, this was given in this challenge it was not proposed by me so the Google was uh, the Google restricted me to use only either Python or Java so I will be using one of this language to solve this question okay now let's move forward to the sample input and sample output okay so here is a sample input the array is 20220 these are the elements of the array so what will be the maximum output for this we can multiply all the positive numbers like 2 2 and 2 3 times 2 is 8 so the output will be 8 similarly for the second input uh, 2 minus 3 1 and uh, we have just checked this before earlier so this is the same so the output will be 30 okay and now let's talk about this third one so the elements are minus 2 minus 3 4 and minus 5 okay so you see one thing there are odd numbers of negative numbers over here so we can only multiply even number of negative numbers to get a positive number okay so we have to choose between this three negative numbers the two most negative numbers so that is minus 5 and minus 3 that is 15 and we can multiply it with 4 to get the output 60 if we have used this minus 2 the answer would be in the negative and that could be my something like minus 60 or something else okay so this is the explanation of the second sample input which we have used here 
uh, this is as similar that we have taken 2 1 sorry not 1 2 minus 3 and 5 to get the solution okay so in the output is 30 now let's move forward to the steps that I took for solving this question again there are no such uh, pretty bad constraint like we have to use uh, we have to give the answer in big O n or we have to use some time com uh, we are limited by some time complexity or space complexity here so I took the most easiest solution to get the most easiest easiest steps to get the solution okay so this is the steps that I used you can choose your you can use your steps also if they are good enough okay so the first step is to make two different array or list we can say list in python okay so the uh, namingly them neg and pos for storing the negatives and positive uh, integer values from the given array okay and next we have we are going to traverse to every element of original array and add element to the new designated array that is negative numbers to the neg, uh, neg array and positive number to the pos array okay and then we are just going to sort the negative array or list you can say using the inbuilt function any inbuilt function you can use why we are using uh, doing this you will just get in in few minutes okay now we have to check for the length of the negative array this is actually capital ng okay now we have to check for the uh, length of capital like array negative array the array that is consisting all the negative elements okay so first what we are going to do we are going to check whether the length of the negative array is odd or not if that is odd we will be removing the last element after the sorting of course that will be the least negative one and so in the case of uh, this the sample input 3 as I told you we can't multiply 3 negative numbers to get a positive number we have to multiply only even number of negative numbers to get a positive one so what we are excluding here is this 2 the least negative so the output will be maximum okay and if the number of uh, negative numbers are even we have to do nothing now what we have to do we have to multiply each element of neg both negative and positive and store the result in a result with even we can use this uh, following statement to multiply this elements okay now so there are some special test cases which I have gone through while solving the question so it took me a while to uh, find out what are the special test cases for this problem and first we have to take care of what if all the zeros or one are in the input like this one what if there are only zeros in the input or what if there are only ones in the input we have to give the output accordingly and second thing we have to take care of single negative number of input what if we are only given this minus 3 as an input in the array then we have to give the output minus 3 okay because we have to include include at least one panel to repair okay you understand that so that's why we have to output this negative minus 3 over here so now let's move forward to the coding part it actually took me around 30 minutes to solve this problem plus we can say 10 minutes to find out the special uh, this special test cases which i'm getting wrong answers for so it took me around like 45 minutes or 40 minutes to solve this level of the foobar challenge so let's go to the coding now so i'm going to use python to solve this question you can use java as well if you like and if you're fa uh, not familiar with java or python you can also use c plus uh, that's up to you you just have to follow those steps that I have told you okay so first I will create a function solution okay so as I told you first we have to take care of this special test case that is what if we get only a single number as an input and that is negative okay so first what we are going to do we are going to check for the length of the input array that is our power array and if that is equal to 1 we are just going to return that number whatever it is if it is 0 we are going to return 0 if it is a negative number we are going to return negative number that's for sure so now we are going to move forward to the first step that is we are going to make two different array negative and positive for storing the numbers okay so here we go also I'm going to make an another variable uh, namely ones which is of boolean type to uh, find out whether a single one or more than one uh, one number one integer integer one has been appeared in the power array or not okay you'll find out why I'm doing this okay so now we are going to move forward to the second step that is we are going to traverse the original array and distribute the numbers from to negative and positive array okay so here we go
Okay. So here what I'm doing, if I'm excluding zero and one numbers respectively, cause multiplying any number with zero will be, uh, give us only zero and multiplying with one is also unnecessary for us. Okay. So that's why I'm uh, just counting whether a single one has been a single or more than one number, one digit number one has been encountered in our array or not to choose the result, whether we have to give the result zero or one or anything else. Okay. You will get about that in later in the part of the code. So now what is the next step? The next step is to sort the negative error. So this is a very simple command over here. So now the, we are going to move forward to the fourth step. That is check the length of the negative array and remove if the length is odd, remove the last element if the length is odd and do nothing if it is even. Okay. Okay, now we are moving forward to the fifth and sixth step. So first I'm going to create a variable result and give it a value one. And now we will just use for loop to iterate through the negative and positive array and multiply the result with the elements, okay. Okay, so we have completed with all of the steps, fifth and sixth both, and now it's time to print the result. Now we will get to know why I have declared this uh, boolean variable one, that is counting whether a single one, whether even a single one has been encountered in the array or not. So let's say we and uh, we are just given this input that is all zeros in the input. Okay, then uh, this one will be remains false and there's also nothing in uh, negative or positive array. So the answer should be what zero for this case. Okay. For this case, what should be the answer zero. So we have to check and also what if we are given this second test case that is all ones or either one in the, the array. So in that case, what will happen while we are iterating through this loop, uh, then the uh, negative and positive variable remain uh, null. They are not going to have any element in them, but this variable, this Boolean will turn to true. And then we can check this. If it is true, we are going to return one or else we are going to return what zero. So here it is how I'm going to do this. We are just going to use an if check. So if the result is equals to one and there is and the ones, there are no ones in the result. What we have to print, we have to print zero. Or else what we have to print, we have to print just result. So that's it with it. Our code is fully complete and I have got some more test cases than this for you. So I'll just write them down. Okay. So these are the six test cases on which we are going to test our code. So let's try to run it. Uh, while it is uh, running, we can get what is the output for the first one. So first one only has this minus six and all of this are zeros. So we can just take zero and what will their output? Zero. The maximum will be what? Zero. So the output is zero. Am I right? Yes, am I right? So for the second, uh, the output should be two, two and two. That is eight. So, right. And third, we have just used in, in the PPT. So the output will be what? 60. And for all one's case, let's say all of the input uh, elements are one. So what with the output, what should be the output? The output should be one. And for this, the output should be zero. So one and zero. And for the last one, if any non-negative number or single number has been inputted, the answer should be that number itself. Okay. So the answer for this is six and six and this is, and so this was the challenge that I got in Fubal level two. And this was the code that I submitted over there for the solution uh, for the problems similar to this. And I hope you like this video. And if I get any other in interesting question in FUBAR or any other platform, I will share it to you all guys. And if you're looking for the Java code, uh, this is the Python code, which we have written. And if you're looking for the Java code, wait, this is empty. So you guys, I have a work for you. See, I have given you this simple list steps that I have took to solve this problem in Python. You're just to follow this same steps, each and every step 
with the special test cases and you will be able to find find your java code uh, i will just wait for a few days if, if none of you reply in the comments for the java code i hope that one of you will write java code and just put put it down in the comments if none of you can do it i will just do it and post it in one of the comments okay so if you like this video give us a like if you want more such videos on competitive programming or a detailed video on any other topic for competitive programming like dp or recursion or tree and etc just comment the topic down below that i want this topic question or this topic video i will be there and i and share this video with all of your friends with all of your colleagues and support us guys like just do this do, do click the subscribe button and hit that bell icon okay so that's it for today i hope you like this video and bye bye